find time for hemp. Yeah. Thank you for taking time for hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to the live broadcast all around the world on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and on AM FM stations all across America. I want to give a big shout out to all of my friends up in Canada and say thank you to KDK Distributors for being nice enough to give us a grant to keep us loud, proud, and strong. Send my love to the hardworking activists in Japan. Know that our hearts are with you. If you want to make a donation to help, please go to doctorswithoutborders.com. I know they could use your assistance in that country. On the program today, my joint host, Carrie Burns. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Hi, Casper. How you doing? I am. Hi, Carrie. I'm doing fine. Thank you. And you and I have a joint guest who is working very diligently down in Australia, and he's making a, a difference in as much as he can. And we're going to be talking about his work there, and we're going to be talking about uh, Payday Fridays. Every, every Friday here on Time for Hemp right now, we focus on the economy of re-legalization, and this economy is a huge bust for a lot of countries, and uh, that is why we are making it a point today to have on the program such a hardworking activist, uh, Paul Benham. Paul, thank you for taking time for hemp. No worries. Good day. Uh, why don't you let people know what it is that you're doing down there in Australia? Oh, well, I'm doing lots of things with hemp. First thing I'm doing right this very week and last week is actually planting the seed. That's where it all starts. It all comes from the seed, and we're planting the seed in the soil right now. I've got two crops um, growing this year um, for two particular uses, which I'll come to shortly. Uh, one is a more commercial crop, and the other one is for um, research and development. We're growing six different varieties of industrial hemp in the same crop. We're growing it actually in a um, in a heart shape, so people can come and walk inside the heart inside the love of hemp and um, look around and see all the different varieties and the sizes and, and, and how they grow. Um, I'm doing that at a hemp farm, which is a museum now. Um, we have a hemp, an industrial hemp museum. It's purely industrial hemp, um, this particular museum. And we wanted to show the general public, which we're now opening to open to tours here in Australia, where people can come and visit the hemp farm learn all about the different uses of industrial hemp, learn um, about all the different uses that I'm involved with, particularly bioplastics, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Um, of course, the clothing, processing, growing, harvesting, um, building, and, and all the other different uses. So we're, we're doing that as well. Um, and I'm also focusing on um, the marketing of the end product, um, because you can't grow hemp without having a market, and you can't. Well, you, can, you America has proved otherwise, but you can market only in America with the the mark the product without growing, um, growing it. Thank um, happily to Canadians, of course. How many, um, how many seed are you planting per square feet on that? Um, we are planting. Well, we're planting about eighty plants for our seed crops, and up to about two hundred plants um, up a square meter. Sorry, so I, I don't know the square feet. So I'm sure people, if you, uh, listeners, can can convert that. But eighty to two hundred plants well, per even, square. Because traditionally they planted around forty seed per square foot. So you're doing. You're probably right in line because a square meter would be like three times that. So uh, that would be yeah. between. Yeah. Uh, I found it very interesting that they always said that you'd harvest about six tons of of, of flower top material off an acre of hemp. But when I ran the numbers, that was only three grams per plant. And if you mm. do 40 seed per square foot, you're looking at 1.7 million plants, that would only be three grams a plant. I'm thinking that it's really more closer to about 50 tons per acre of, of actual flower tops, which would which would translate to uh, more fuel and et cetera. But uh, Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we don't harvest the, the flowering tops uh, per se, so I can't tell you the, the, that way from experience. But. Right. Mm. Mm. So, so that, what does the government there think about everything that you're doing? I, I was my impression that uh, your country was as uh, upset about marijuana as our country. Um, uh, they are, generally. Um, though, though they seem to have, um, they seem to understand the economics a little bit better 
than um, the North American government at this time. I they 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 they're very happy to send me bills for everything that I do. They they charge me for um yeah for for talking about it. They charge me for how they for having a license for importing seed. They have a, I have to have a, another license for holding seed. And each of these licenses, of course, cost me lots of money. Um, then I have a license to plant the seed. Then I have to have a license for doing research with the seed. Then I have to have a license for processing the seed and storing the seed. And then I have to have a license for the businesses um, which go and then promote the seed. So the government is taking taking some money at every single step of the way. Um, and they're probably making more than I am this year. Um, in my, in certainly in my research uh, development projects and the hemp farm business. So. How much uh, seed do you get off of a uh, acre or whatever you? How, yeah, well, weight, weight yeah. wise. Yeah, well, we we we're hoping to get basically um, one ton per hectare um, of seed. Um, so yeah, yeah that's that, actually that's, a, that's a low number actually compared to uh, the. Uh, statistics that the government put out from the 40s when they did the hemp for victory period uh mm. well that that's 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 partly because um we're not purely growing for seed um in, in our main crop so we have a research and development crop which which we grow you know and we get more very it, it's a great it's relatively small but we're growing lots of different things the um more commercial crop we're growing we're growing for seed and fiber so we're growing what's called a dual crop so we're, we're purposely growing in between the seed and the fiber. So we get less seed and we get less fiber, but we get to use both both parts of the plant. Uh -huh. Now, are you actually taking these plants and making the plastics and the fibers? And Are you, are you just making a variety of different products so that you can demonstrate to the world how much uh, revenue can be generated and all the things that can be made very well with this plant? Is that what's going on here? That's that's a good a good question, which I would love to be able to do. Um, sadly, it, it, well, not sadly, but it, it just practically, I guess, it, it can't all be done in one place. Um, not unless I was a millionaire, and I'm not not yet, but I will be soon, I'm sure. From from um, if I continue to grow hemp, because it, you know it, there are lots of possibilities um, from the hemp. And at the moment, I'm keeping investing. <clears throat> Every time I make a lot of money, I put it back into a next project. So I want to show that's which is why I'm able to show all these different uses without focusing purely on the commercial aspect at this time. Um, and I've been supporting a lot of other people um, to get involved with the commercial aspect. So I'm I've made making a lot of other people money, which I'm I'm very glad to do because <laughs> we've got to share this crop. There's enough for a lot of people. There's so much space um, in the industry. Now, with that said, I, I've often said on this particular program that if the uh, legalization of marijuana were to kick in and this prohibition would end, there would be a dramatic shift of wealth in the mm. world. Those who mm. have would no longer have, and those who have not would suddenly have. Mm. Well, I, I, believe right? that's, I believe that's to do with... Um, I guess the the deeper need of our our global priorities, what we choose as a society to put as our highest priorities. Right now, um, in a consumeristic, capitalistic society, we have gen it, we, we seem to have chosen um, you know things like fast cars, which use lots of fuel, lots of plastic objects as as our priority. When we start to realise that. The, the things that we actually need do include fuel, of course, um, but, you know, more of, of a more sustainable kind. And when we prioritize our planet and our Earth and the sustainability of that planet and on Earth for future generations, then I think the, the objects and the material um, things that we use will be slightly different. So and which which may move more away from the um, finan the actual financial system as it stands. So I think there will be a transition where, of course, it will be part of the, the existing financial situation. But I don't know personally how long this financial situation in, in the planet will last. And I know that hemp will always be valuable for all of its uses and that those uses will always be um, of, of value in whatever the value is in, in that world, whether it be money, whether it be gold, whether it be, be, be bath or, or, or what have you. We're always going to need full food, fuel, fiber, medicine, and all of these other things that can come from industrial hemp. Well, one yeah. of the things that uh, is really kind of a, a joke is they you're not going to make the money when, once, like Casper said, once cannabis is made legal and the prohibition ends and you can start growing hemp, 
The mm. money's in the hemp. It's not going to be in the marijuana. The marijuana is going to be, you could almost give that away. Uh, it's not going to take very much to produce what America smokes if everybody smoked. But the, the real fortune is in the hemp and the hemp products and the fuel. I mean, mm. we're, you're looking at a trillion and a half dollar industry if we would just make it happen. And like you said, it can begin just by planting the seeds. And, and that's what I'm waiting on. Just mm. you know, tell us we can plant the seeds. We'll show you. If you don't mm. believe us, we'll show you that this can happen. But Mm -hmm. uh, it's now, just what, a lot what of, are, are the products that you make there? Yeah, okay. So coming back to the products that, that we make there, at the moment we're focusing on food building and gardening products. Um, that's what we're doing here from, from our current crops. Um, the abilities to make um, numerous types of building materials, um, numerous types of food products um, and garden products are the simplest and require the least amount of uh, processing um, material ma or machinery. Now, yeah, um, overseas they're, they're producing, and I'm, I, I work all around the globe. I don't work just purely in Australia. I'm a consultant to companies um, in Hong Kong, China, uh, Europe, um, uh, New Zealand, uh, um, places in the South Pacific, who are and all, all these places are make are, have places are, are are making products out of hemp. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so all... you, you, wait, wait. So you mean America is like back in the dark ages and dragging its feet? It is the last to come on board. Is that a surprise? <laughs> well, yes, yeah. we're supposed to be the world's leaders. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You, you, you once once were until the, the government, is, as you say, is dragging its feet and really, really, you know, stopping it from happening. I mean, thankfully, the people are are what count um, in in any country, in my opinion, and the, the people are demanding hemp products. So hemp products are coming to North Americans. North Americans are realizing and recognizing that hemp is extremely important for themselves and their society. And um, I believe it's only a matter of time before you will be able to grow. And we won't be discussing, you know, when will it be legalized? We'll, we'll be discussing, wow, all right, you know, what's the next step? You know, how, how do we bigger and better? Um, and it's my opinion that we should be preparing for that at this time because it really is a matter of time. And it's, you know, first in best dressed, as they say, it, it's, it's, we've got to be ready for, for this time. And that's the way I look at it. I'm looking at, yep, it's going to happen. I've seen it happen everywhere else. Um, and, and, you know, there's only so long that they can say no um, and before we just do it anyway. When you all are uh, processing the hemp, do you use one of those decorticator machines to separate the fibers in the cellulose herds? Or how do you all do that? Do you do it by hand? How you how are you all processing it? Yeah, well, we're, we are not using a decorticator in, our, in my personal um, crops. Um, there are two decorticators being produced at the moment in this country um, for for different uses. But I'm I'm showing my goal was to show the world that we can process and commercially make hemp commercially viable without decortication. Um, and there are, there are a number of uses to do that. So I want to I want to basically allow hemp, bring hemp to the people rather than you know allow again only hemp to people who have um, the million dollars. Well, the thing I was thinking that even, you know, of course, if it goes legal and mainstream, mm. you're going to need machines like that because you'll have to be, you'll be so much to process, sure. but sure. that just the very manufacturing and engineering and design and building of the machines to work the hemp is going to put people to work. I mean, that's going to be a boon to the economy just in itself. And, uh, I, I really do believe that that's the future is not just in the pro of course the manufacturing of the products that's going to put millions of people to work and mm. and all of that but uh, mm. there's a lot of uh, support help that's going to have to occur that doesn't even really have anything to do with the hemp other than the processing of it so that's yeah. uh, are you talking about giving a bunch of uh, unemployed auto workers jobs and auto <laughs> steel work unemployed steel workers job now hush yeah. you're going to scare the government there they're going to I have a boycott there. People are going to be demanding that we do this. Yeah, they're going to start making the cars out of it like Henry Ford did way long ago, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's well, another that's... aspect. Now, Paul, people yeah. don't realize that the plastic that comes from this plant, and you've seen it firsthand, is strong enough to be used as auto body. It isn't a BMW and Volkswagen making uh, their auto bodies with this type of material. Yeah, you'll, you'll be surprised that most – um, automotive manufacturers in the world now are actually using hemp for a lot of 
their internal car parts right now. And the potential is, it's it's not a joke. I mean, you really can make a car out of hemp. Um, And, you know, I've had a few people actually talk to me about doing that fully, making a full car from hemp or pretty much most parts from it. Um, It it really can be done. Um, And, yeah, I'd I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the bioplastic side, um, which is, yeah, which is quite a a large subject because there's hundreds of types of bioplastics bioplastics or plastics in the world and um, they all have different uses and different properties um, and that's the kind of thing that, that I started to learn when I first got involved with hemp plastics in um, in the mid 90s I um, I recognized I'd seen these videos of Henry Ford smashing a car with an axe and the axe bouncing off and not even denting the car and you know that that was oh, you know he was my idol in those days and still is in 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 from what he'd done in creating um, a phenomenal um, biocomposite and a biocomposite. Well, yeah. With that said, I know that we can find a copy of that uh, of Henry Ford doing that on YouTube, and would encourage people to go to YouTube and type in Henry Ford car hemp car. You'll find yep. it. And when we come back, I want to talk about uh, the hemp plastics and uh, imports and exports and how it's going to not only generate incomes for uh, people in one country, how it's going to generate uh, incomes for people all around the world, which is where this broadcast is heard. I want to thank AmericanFreedomRadio.com for raising our voice and keeping us loud, proud, and strong. Please go to our sponsors. Let them know that you heard about them here on the program. And uh, we're going to listen to a song about how fantastic marijuana is after the commercial break. And then we'll come back and take a whole lot more time for him. It is 420 somewhere. That is why we always say here it is time for hemp. And you're listening live right now on AmericanFreedomRadio.com and on AM FM stations all across America. Big shout out to all my friends in Germany. Thank you for your cards and letters. And always, I appreciate your emails. Just please write a little more English. Guten Tag. And I want to say thank you to Serious Seeds for being part of our advertising family and all of my love to my friends there in Switzerland, Amsterdam, and the Netherlands. And we are on the program today with a new friend of ours from Australia who has been working hard to teach America the truth about paper, fiber, fuels, and medications. And uh, there is nothing quite like doing that, I must say. Uh, uh, Paul, if uh, you had one thing to say to people who are thinking about getting involved in uh, a hemp industry, is it a good thing? Is it an economically sound investment? Is it uh, maybe a a shady business that might uh, take your money? It's the best thing you could ever do, and do it now. Excellent. Excellent. Now, when it comes to importing and exporting uh, products, is there a problem coming in and out of America with your hemp oils and your hemp plastics and your hemp seeds and and that kind of groovy stuff? No, and and that's one of the things that um, a lot of people um, overlook. Um, The fact that you can't grow hemp in North America doesn't stop you importing and exporting all the products made from it, i.e. creating a market. And um, when when you are able to grow hemp as well, that's uh, that's something that you need to know is that the market um, has to be balanced with the products that you sell, so uh, with the products that you grow. So there's no point growing until there is a market at which, and a market requires the manufacturing and the um, processing um, of of that product. So you, it's like the chicken and egg situation. You don't want to grow too much for uh, w- without having a, enough of a market and processing in between, and you don't want to sell too much unless you know you've got enough to, that's going to be grown. And you know, you, you it, there's also. Um, there are limited uh, seed supplies if you wanted to grow, you know, 3% of North America's crop um, or, or existing crops out of industrial hemp. You would have to work on getting the seed and upscaling the seed um, availability, which can happen, of course, and only takes a few years. But it does take a few years. So um, we we have to work on, on it at one stage at a time. And I guess that that's why I decided to share my knowledge through my courses at starterhempbusiness.com dot com and with with everyone nationally about explaining very specific steps that one that I've learned that that has to be taken 
um, to make a successful hemp business. And um, that, that doesn't, that can be anything. It doesn't mean that you have to grow or you have to process or you have to market this product or that product. It's for anybody. And it's pretty much basic business advice that I've learned along the way in my 17 years of experience working with industrial hemp um, in pretty much every continent of the planet. Yeah, and uh, as Carrie Wait. said, it's got it's got its side industries. And Carrie, pass it to you just a second here. Yeah. But I'm looking at your three websites, and I'm just getting the impression that darn near every creature comfort comfort that a human being needs can be produced from this one plant. Carrie, well, and anything they make from oil, you can make from the hemp stalk. And the thing about this, the joke of it all, our country had 200 years of growing hemp in this country. It was the main industry that we had, and we just threw that away because once they made alcohol legal, they needed another prohibition and all and to put all those federal agents to work. So they immediately after alcohol went illegal, they started working on making hemp illegal because they could see the writing on the wall. But we threw away an industry that back then was over a billion and a half dollars a year in the 20s and 30s. So, you know, do the math today. We, you know, they talk about Obama's plan of $400 million to put people back to work. And they said, oh, that would put about a million or two people back to work. If you made hemp legal today, you would put immediately 10 million people back to work today. And that's the joke of it. This country is so stuck on our kids getting a hold of marijuana, which is a joke in itself, that we're going to give up something that really could pull America out of its economy doldrums. I mean, we use 20 million barrels of oil a day in this country. That's about a trillion dollars a year. What if we put that money from, made our fuel out of hemp oil, which could easily be done. It was being done way back when. It's, it's been known for a long, long time. How many people, what, why, are we the, why are we allowing a government to be not only so stupid, but also try to dumb us down and make us seem stupid? I don't get it. Well, good question. And Paul, that brings to the task. How many jobs have you noticed being created from the hemp industry in the various countries that you're going to? Um, well, pretty much um, at the moment, every day I'm speaking with somebody and giving them a job. Um, li literally, um, yesterday, because it's now 4.20 in the morning here, um, yesterday I gave two people a job who having are coming next week for training. And, you know, it's just... And it's not just me personally, of course, because there's all the people I'm training up are teaching other people and employing other people. So it's happening. It's actually happening now or hempening, as we would like to say here. <laughs> uh, now, now, your your research arm, the arm that you use for research, who are you working in research with? What types of research are you doing and what are you finding? Um, well, the, the research that I'm involved with now, there's not much. Okay, the, the research mainly is in upscaling the production and creating larger commercial ventures um, for different specific uses. So for, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, in, well, a few years ago, um, there was a, a study commissioned for the use of hemp and biofuel, so creating biofuel from hemp. Now, we all know that can be done, and a lot of people know how that can be done. Um, however, we wanted to know how it really can be done using the best engineers that we have on the planet. What, why, why, you know, do it half scale? So um, we went to to Europe and um, got got a, a commissioned an amazing study to to be done, um, which has shown really how we can make hemp biofuel on a massive scale. Um, now that hasn't that plant hasn't been built yet, but we now have the engineering um, available to us, where we're we're ready to go and raise the the cash and find the partners um, to create that kind of thing. And that's the kind of research that that I I enjoy doing for companies with companies um, at, at the moment. Well, that's mm. uh, I I made hemp fuel in the seventies. It's, mm. it's very simple to do. It's, mm. it's, you know, and you. I just don't get this country. We just we want to be the dumbest country on the planet. And the fact that that all these countries around the world that don't even have the resources or even the level of of educated 
public that we have in this country, and then we're just going to sit by and pretend that this is just some sort of joke. I mean, I was talking to a, a law enforcement officer about the hemp, just the hemp part, and all this, not even talking about the marijuana. We were just talking about the hemp, and he said, oh, you don't believe all that? That's something some hippies made up in California, and I kind of looked at him like, well, uh, so you're denying the history of this country? I mean, get real. This, mm -hmm. you know, they're... This, these, you know, they were making 50,000 products out of hemp back in the 30s, in the 30s, mm. you know, from mm. dynamite to paper. It would, it, it just, uh, it's insane. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to say that, you know, that there are some um, a great American, North American companies um, that, are, that I'm starting to work with now um, who are really putting their money where their mouth is and actually taking action in North America and around the world um, with, with different hemp products. I think um, I've got a link to one of those on, on hemppowered.com, which is my website, which describes all the different uses of industrial hemp. It's kind of my free information website. And, um, you know, there's some great business opportunities for people in North America to get involved with companies that are, are selling food products right now, but are actually investing in and diversifying into a great range of different um, industrial hemp businesses um, in production and manufacturing. And, you know, the, the North American company that, that, that I'm working with is because they, you can't grow in North America, they're coming and giving us jobs here in Australia. So, um, you know, so I'm not complaining too much about the, the, what the government's doing <laughs> from, well, from, not, from that perspective. <laughs> But well, the United is, States is great about giving our jobs to the other countries. <laughs> yeah, it's my understanding that even Pampers is being made out of hemp or part hemp now, and has been for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of products now that I think of people in our country would be surprised are being uh, made out of hemp and freely and regularly used in other in other continents. Mm, yep, yep, in, indeed. So you know there there are real opportunities and. Um, you know, there are ways that people can get involved in North America and, and overseas um, in, in different ways. Um, and, yeah, I think a lot of your – I don't know how long we've got till the next break, but I really would love to get into the bioplastics um, uh, conversation, which I know a lot of people have been, have been wanting to hear about, um, and it's an exciting subject. And, and, and as we've said, it's, it's – We'll kick that off now. We've got a couple of minutes. When we come back, we'll finish up where we left off. Yeah, sure. Well, um, bioplastics, as I mentioned earlier, they're different types, and I've been involved with a number of different types. I'll, I'll maybe I'll start with one before the break, and we'll go into the other after the break. Um, the the one I'd like to talk about first, um, maybe, is the c most commercially viable one today, and it's available today, which is a, a biocomposite blend. So that start, started off. Um, when I first created a, a, plas a plastic um, example called the High Fly, which was a frisbee um, made from 25% hemp. And um, we, I'd done that as an example of what could be done working with some technicians in uh, the UK, actually, in, in North Wales. And we created this biocomposite of 25% hemp. It still used 75% polypropylene. But um, it was the first step in the door, so to speak, and it was my my showing. Well, look, you know, at least we're converting 25% of this in, into hemp, which, if you know how much bioplastic or plastics are used in the world, that's a considerable amount if it was to be used. And we made um, frisbees for lots of different companies. People like Sensi Seeds in Amsterdam bought theirs, and different food companies bought their frisbees and stamped their name on it. And that was fun and exciting project. Um, I wanted to take that out to as many people as possible, so we made um, uh, a CD tray next. And I thought that CD tray was a great idea because we, we could then go and market this to, you know, great musicians. Um, and I focused on the, the biggest musicians I could contact, people like Madonna, Sting, uh, Michael Franti, people who all were singing about all of these, you know, great, great uses of the environment and how we should care for our planet, um, a, a number of people and, and movie stars hoping that they would put their money where their mouth is and, you know, pay the extra 10% or, you know, of a product that it cost at the time. Right. And um, use some, some hemp plastic in their product and, and tell all their fans. Um, I, that was when I really learned about the, the commercial aspects and the fact that they, they, none of them supported it um, because it cost 10% extra. So, you know, I, I learned a big uh, strong lesson there is that, wow. But the, <laughs> you know, wow. The wow. polypropylene can be made from the hemp. Yeah, so you, well, you, know, it, you don't even have to use the oil 
pop that's the polypropylene made from oil you can make it right from the hemp so you could it could be a hundred percent uh from the hemp yep yeah well it, it can and it took it has taken me many many years um to to get nearer that stage yeah, I, basic um, organic chemistry it, uh, well i need to jump in here and we're going to take a commercial break and pay our bills and uh, with that said uh, maybe it's time for us to take a look at how we spend our money on the uh, markets too and when we go to buy music because if the uh, people who smoke it can't get behind it maybe they, we should let them know hey you need to stop for a minute let the whole world know that it really is time for hemp get your smoke on yeah, baby, loud, be proud, let everybody know that you are a marijuana smoker from out of the closet, get involved. There are initiatives going on all around the country. There are politicians running to make a difference. Put your money where your mouth is, get involved in an organization or start one because you know the truth. And as long as you're sitting there watching somebody try to figure out who's the next best talent in whatever country you're in, hey, you're just part of the problem. Become part of the solution. Get involved. On the program today, we are talking to Paul Benham from Australia and Carrie Burns from America. I want to send my love to all of my friends there at Hayes Magazine in Argentina and, of course, Weed World Magazine in England and all of my friends in Canada because you are listening to Time for Hemp all around the world on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Paul, we could turn the whole world around, start building jobs, building an economy, and making the world a better place just by making plastic out of hemp. And golly, that would be a heck of an industry. Indeed, indeed. And it, and it is already growing now. From the um, CD cases that I talked about before, um, I've been working with a number of different people who've developed blends from moving up from 25% to now 75% hemp um, blended with other polypropylene and, and other similar products. They've also now developed um, on their own um, behalf over, over 15 years manufacturing capabilities for about 100 ton a year of hemp and PLA, which ba basically means it's completely bio-based completely um, plant-based plastics and they can and, and these particular plastics are inject injection molded so they can be used in regular injection molding machines which is pretty much how most plastics are made standard around the world so we can now sell them pellets um, and there's a minimum of usually of about two ton of pellets you need to buy before everyone writes in saying oh well, let's buy a kilo of that and, and try a product and you know the molding costs are relatively high but people in the industry um, are aware that they can now buy these um, bio pellets from hempplastic.com and make any product that they like in a regular injection molding facility using regular injection molds. So very happy to, to talk more about that later. But what I'd really love to get onto is is where where my I, I moved on to a material that's actually 100% hemp. And um, this is a product that you'll probably be more interested in because it, it's literally 100% hemp. There's actually no glues, no resins. Um, there's no heat used in the process. Um, there's no big pressure used in the process. And it's literally 100% hemp. And it, it is um, this material, um, which I found, which I didn't invent, but um, I found the inventor over in Europe. Um, and they subsequently persuaded him that I wanted to take that um, and, and make a business out of it. Uh, we raised a, a million dollars and built a, a, fa a small factory, just a pilot plant here in, in Australia to produce this amazing material, which can, which when you, you take hemp and you, you make it into like a, like a porridge kind of thing, and then you, you put it onto a form and it dries and it becomes stronger than steel. So I had found the material that, that I had been looking for that, that, you know, Henry Ford had given me inspiration of. I'd found this material and I worked to develop it commercially um, with, with a group of people that I put together. And um, this material is still being developed. It's still in developmental stage, but we are producing a few products from that today. Um, some people may have heard of the 100% hemp didgeridoos. Uh, we also sell bowls and small like stash boxes, I guess, um, and key rings um, at hempplastic.com. These are brand new products. Um, the, the didgeridoos we've been selling for a while, but all these other products we only launched last week. 
and they're all one of a kind they're all handmade in in this one of a kind factory in the whole planet where you can actually own a piece of this hemp plastic and show people that you know you can smash a piece of concrete with one of these boxes you can you can get it and and whack a piece of concrete and it'll crack the concrete before it will crack um one one you know this material which is literally purely 100 percent hemp um and we we had some um, the only thing that we add to this hemp is some pigments, which are from the earth, natural eco pigments to, to give it some coloring and make it look like art pieces. Um, but this is the kind of material that I envision many materials could be made from. Uh, we've produced over the time furniture, lighting. Um, we, we've even made some um, temporary computer cases that can be made from this this material. I, you know, I envision car, the actual car bodies um, could be made from this material because it, it's so very, very strong. You could make um, building materials from it as well. This like material the, is really the future. It's like the carbon fiber. It is very similar to carbon fiber. It's not as strong as carbon fiber because carbon is basically what everything is made up of. Um, but carbon fiber requires significant amount of, of heat and, and energy right. to produce and it is not sustainable in its production facilities. This this 100% hemp material um, is run on a factory that runs by biodiesel, which could, of course, be run on hemp fuel. Um, sure. should, should we have the capabilities of doing that and, and solar? So, you know, th- th- this is truly a sustainable material and everything from the seed to the manufacturing to the end product which when you're finished with it um although we coat it in a wax and an oil um to, to make it water resistant but when you're finished with it if you actually put it and leave it in the soil in the right conditions it will go 100 percent back to the earth and will not will not harm or damage the earth in any way it's 100 percent biodegradable yeah. it, it is a material that i'm extremely excited about and i, yeah. I think you know, if you touched and felt this material you, you would you can feel that it's natural. You can feel that it's hemp, and um, it really is like nothing else. So, um, well, we, we, the other thing that people don't realize is that it's able to create everything from very thin plastics to thick plastics, and everything from something as smooth as silk to rough as canvas. So, yep. no matter what it is that you're trying to develop, whether it be cloth or uh, something mm-hmm. in the field of plastic or even oils, uh, this plant has the ability to go from uh, substance to substance. It's amazing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm ashamed of the I'm ashamed of the scientific world because this plant is so unique. There's not another like it. There's there's some out there that do produce several products and all that, but there's none that do it on near the level of, of what the hemp products and like this product you're just we're just talking about, the strongest steel. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm ashamed of the scientific community for for nothing else but for not giving light to this you know because it is unique and when you have something unique like that you don't bastardize it and try to run it in the ground and arrest people and all you embrace it and and let it become part of society who wouldn't want something that was that environmentally friendly and that environment clean it just it just goes to show you how these corrupt business people these corrupt politicians and all they they are the problem and uh we we've got to get rid of them well, one thing I, I think, too, helps if companies like John Deere realize how many people they can employ if they start making decoricators. Now, Seriously. <laughs> it's the truth, Casper, I yeah. swear. Not just decoricators, but, I mean, there there's a whole whole bunch of machinery that could be, you know, technically designed specifically for processing him, and it would make it make it so simple, and then you could take, ideas like Paul has there and all and turn out all these products that would benefit society and also it would be cheaper for us not more it wouldn't be more expensive but once you yep. once you get something like that going and more people are using it all the costs come down they don't go up that's 100% true the the, the 100% hemp plastic I'm talking to you about is is literally 100% hemp so you can grow yeah. this resource in three it. or four months it, yeah. and it, it it costs nothing, basically. It costs yeah. just you know, the real, real cheap farming of it, which you can get yeah. 20 tons per the hectare here. Sure. Um, and John Deere have been working on, on hemp um, processing machinery, just for your information. So oh, it, Wow. It is- well, now, now it says that every time you turn around, you got to pay a license. You got to pay a license. You got to pay a license. That's ridiculous. It sounds to me like there's uh, people is. in your country who are still afraid of this plant and hell bent oh. to keep it down. Now, what, what, what benefit is it for them to do that? Um, well, they're, they're the only benefit for them to do that is to to make money, which you know at this time you know I'm I'm not objecting to. I'm I'm saying well at least we can do it. 
Well, um, no, that, but we still should them, object. It's just like our government when they regulate everything. It just it dry, they do it intentionally because they want those businesses to fail. They don't. They're not mm -hmm. in the business of trying to mm -hmm. get a new idea and making it happen and create jobs. They're in the opposite of that. So that's why they regulate things to death. I would say start complaining about those. Say, look, this is a natural product. You have no right to tax a product that comes from the earth like that. You make me have all these stupid laws just because you're going to you're reverting back to the marijuana laws basically is what right. they're doing. Yeah. I, mean, I got to yeah. jump in here. We're down to about a minute. I, Paul, we're going to have to have you back as a guest in another couple of weeks. There's so much more we want to cover. I've got a lot of instant messages from people around the world who want to, uh, want to have you back as a guest. Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to talk more about buildings, more about plastics even, and more about hemp building and, and hemp foods, which is my personal passion and why I got involved with hemp at the beginning. So there is so much to talk about. In, well, in how the about two weeks from the day? Uh, that, that's possible. I have to check my calendar, but um, I'll confirm that very shortly. In the All meantime, right. the audience, that way the audience kind of knows to look for you so they know to tune back in and not, yes. and not miss you. I want to give everybody a chance to give a shout out to websites. So, Paul? Yeah, sure. Well, I love, you know, those, those hemp plastic items, you can buy like a keyring now for just like $10 and have a piece of 100% hemp in your pocket. And you can get that and all the information about hemp plastics at hempplastic.com. That's all one word, H-E-M-P-P-L-A-S-T-I-C.com. Um, you can find out all about the, the um, American business opportunities um, on the front page of Hemp Powered, which is hemp. And then Howard, um, or Powered with H-E-M on the front of it, H-E-M-P-O-W-E-R-E-D.com. And if you're interested in starting your own hemp business and you're really, you know, really serious about it, then have a look at the um, resources that I spent about a year producing not so long ago and only just finished at startahempbusiness.com. That's all one word, startahempbusiness.com. And that's there to support people so that everyone can make money and be successful in the way I have done in, in all these different projects that I've been involved with. I want to share that love because we Thank need to you. make Thank you. We're, we're heading out now, so I want to, we'll have you back in two weeks. Carrie, CannabisCorner.com, is that it? Dot .us, CannabisCorner.us. And you'll hear me next time. You'll know it's time for him. <laughs>